And um, one of the when I when I got with my partner, the first thing she told me about was I have a daughter on the spectrum. Uh, and what that mm-hmm. means is you cannot come and go in my life and I will not have enough time for you as much as other people would want. And I was like, no, trust me, I'm good. I don't need as much attention <laughs> as other people. And then we started talking right. about it and I pointed out that I'm on the spectrum and she goes, what does that mean for our relationship? And I was like, it means we're going to have to figure this out. That's what it means. <laughs> <laughs> Cause, cause That's I, amazing. Yeah, awesome. I have my times where I can't look her in the face, right? I can't make, you know, straight up eye contact. Mm-hmm. I'm always a little off to the side with it. And because I was later diagnosed, right? Like I had always forced myself to mask and stare mm-hmm. at people's eyes, but it was so uncomfortable. And she asked me about that first and foremost, because he doesn't really make eye contact. She was like, how do you feel about looking right. at people's faces? And I immediately went, uh-huh. you know, honestly, if we could just talk without me looking at you, that'd be great. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. And, <laughs> And she's good with it. So how like, long have you guys been together? Uh, we've been together for almost seven years now. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's it's quite a different experience having somebody who understands, for the most part, autism uh, compared yes. to my first marriage, where we were constantly fighting, constantly talking about how each other is not meet, meeting each other's needs. When mm-hmm. I was married, the first marriage, I didn't know I was autistic. I also didn't know I was bipolar. And so, like, mm-hmm. once I got on medication for the bipolar and things kind of stabilized out, things got a little bit different this time around, um, you know, mm-hmm. and, I, and I'm not blaming my behavior or the ruin of my marriage on bipolar because we both had stuff going on. But, you know, right. I mean, mm-hmm. things happen. Uh, but anyway, so. What? We're recording. It's fine. I can cut this out. You didn't tell anyone. Nope. You guys were talking. It's fine. You know, Led, so Steve has this great yeah, ability sure. to catch people off guard. And uh, you, you didn't know, say anything inappropriate. It was just. Well, maybe I didn't want to point out the whole like my first marriage part. Well, it's not in the episode. Yeah, that's true. OK, so I, uh, I could talk about mine and make it even. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, you know what? We'll get into that uh, because, okay. you know, as as uh, with my first marriage, I had two kids and, and my oldest son is the, the level one autist uh, that mm-hmm. I have. And so, like, when he got diagnosed, neither one of me or her had ever been around anyone autistic ever. We had just heard of autism. And so we had to do a lot of learning about how do we support our son? Yeah, I can easily relate to that story yeah. as well. I, I pretty much was the same way. I really had very little mm-hmm. exposure to autism except from what I saw in movies. And yeah. I was told, hi, how are you? Uh, and I was told that, like, that's not a really accurate depiction. Because right. um, it's that thing when you've met one one child with autism, mm-hmm. you've met one kid with autism. Yeah. And they, each one is so unique. So it led me on this journey to like to really learn as much as I could, and especially like, you know, like, you know, right <clears throat> as Jake was born, like mm-hmm. not even a year into like, like, like his life, you know, I became a single dad, you know, like we divorced, like, uh, like, like he, and, um, he and his mother, like, like we were divorced, like by 2012. So by the time he was in school, it was, me like adjusting to life as a single dad mm. and now having to adjust now with this new diagnosis right and how to maneuver with it it was it was truly a challenge mm. so yeah i can i can understand yeah yeah uh, and all the information so my my son was diagnosed um in roughly around 2012 2011 2012 yeah. and even at that point right he was diagnosed with asperger's syndrome because it was still called Asperger's syndrome, relatively speaking, right? Yeah. Um, we mm-hmm. we we have kind of divorced ourselves, if you will, from that language, and we you know allow him to identify himself as just being a level one, uh, or as mm-hmm. he put it, you know, I got a thing. He's also yeah. seventeen <laughs> now. You know, he's he's yeah. a teenager, so not only like being a single dad and figuring out the autism part of that and how do I support my son, but also figuring out how to be a single dad, which is a challenge in itself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like changing diapers on your own, figuring out, you know, uh, when he's sick, what to do, who to call, how to deal with things. And I'm betting with single that's, moms, it's the same way. It That's a challenge. And then also helping with sensory issues. Um, where, um, 
I never know how to appropriately ask this question of another parent when, when they have, uh, sure, but where, where does yeah. your son sit? Level one, two, three, um, high support. Um, level, he's, he's level one, level one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so he's roughly this kid. Got it. Uh, no. mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, just making a joke. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're both level ones as well. Um, well mm -hmm. in, I don't know how, how many questions I want to ask about Jake more so than talking you can about ask parenting. As many as you like. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll answer every one. Excellent. All good. Excellent. Uh, what well, of sensory issues, what, what seems to be Jake's predominant sensory issue? Like which one does he um, kind of have more issue with? I should say. Sounds. Sounds. I, uh, it's, it's definitely sound. It's, 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 um, it's auditory. And mm. it's like, um, so when Jake is in school, he like um he has um the uh a prescribed set of fm like headset that he wears his teacher has a microphone to basically exclude like any kind of background noise where Ooh. he's like easily distracted yeah, yeah. um but um, abrupt noises usually you know like he's easily startled or you know like He'll like he'll like run and hide. I try to keep a quiet environment for him at times, mm -hmm. but he's okay with. I, I should say as he's gotten <clears throat> older, he's uh, he's like as long as he expects like certain sounds yeah. or noises, they, they they won't bother him. So of course, living in Brooklyn, he's used to fire trucks and um, emergency vehicles. I I live across the street from a police precinct, so you get uh, desensitized. Used, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, but there's still moments where, um, there, there's still moments where it's like he's like quickly startled, like you know, like jump scares at the yeah. movies or things like that. Even I jump for that too, well, but yeah, um, <laughs> like, like, but like that's yeah, what it's, it's designed for, yeah, right, yeah. right, yeah. I, right. you know, like the light is shining in my face, I'm okay. gonna move it over here for a second, do whatever but, you gotta do yeah, to be comfy, I, so yeah. um. For our listeners, mm -hmm. um, oh, thank yeah, you for listening to uh, On the Spectrum. No, I'm keeping this in. Anyway. I know you are. You should. <clears throat> um, can, can, I do, can I do my intro? Oh, Jesus. Last time you decided to do the intro, can I do the intro? I'll let you do the warning. Okay. Okay. No, I wasn't going to do the warning. I, you do your thing. All right. Thanks. I was just going to say they were speaking to <laughs> Le, Mr. Yeah, Led Bradshaw I'll introduce. here. I'll It's what I do. All right. <laughs> here we go. <gasps> Welcome to On the Spectrum Podcast. My name is Nick, and this is... Really? Steve. My name's Steve. Uh, so, <laughs> as you heard in our last episode, anybody who listened, uh, Steve decided to mock me a little bit in that, and of course he pointed out that I point to him. And as always on cue, he's a little delayed when he says his name. Anyway, uh, so today <laughs> we are talking to a parent of someone on the spectrum who has done something absolutely amazing. His name is Led Bradshaw. Uh, so far, you've heard us talking to him a little bit because we kind of, well, as always, we started the episode without me knowing. And so <laughs> we just started talking with him. Uh, but here's our happy introduction is I always tell everybody, me and Steve do not presume to be experts in anything whatsoever. We're just two human beings on this wonderful journey of figuring out us and our world on uh, the spectrum. I'm an expert. It, yes, you are. At being you. Being you. Good for you. <laughs> so uh, we don't presume to be experts. I can't imagine Led uh, believes himself to be an expert in much other than being himself no. as a human being. And we're so happy to have you on, Led. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. So uh, just to start off, because we're doing the introduction thing, Led, tell us what you did for your son. Tell us the 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 cool thing that you got going on for you and him. Uh, okay, it's it, um, it's it's still a very humbling thing because um, I can say hi. I'm Led Bradshaw, and I am the creator and illustrator of the Adventures of Jake Jet Pulse, which is an amazing comic book adventure that's based on the uh, the amazing imagination of my son Jacob, who was diagnosed with autism at the age of three and a half. So all of the comic book adventures that you see that we've created all come from his wonderful imagination. And I am just the illustrator. He is the art director and creator. And I pretty much follow along and interpret his story and uh, put it on the paper for the world to see. That is awesome. Uh, show him your shirt real quick. Let's do some shameless promotion. Yeah. Okay. And here we go. This there is we go. 
Trying to get a really good angle over here. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, unleash your inner hero. Absolutely unleash your inner hero. That's an awesome. Oh, yeah, statement. that is our thank you. That that's our that's our mantra, really. As a matter of fact, that we feel that everybody has a story within them to tell. It may not be a superhero story, it could be a crime drama, it could be an adventure, a mystery, but somebody like everyone out there has a story to tell. And I we've always felt that there was a way to connect people and to really like reach out and to really understand people is to really know like what they're thinking mm-hmm. and to get people to, to share especially like 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 the like the kids like um we wanted to put like the whole superhero experience back into the child's hands you know the days of when you're running around the house with a towel pretending to be like a superhero and it's those things that like we we really wanted to bring back like characters that identify with everyone yeah absolutely. so not just like yeah we didn't want the hero's journey to just be reduced to like like the square jawed like you know muscle bound hero that like in our stories we wanted to really emphasize and highlight that the hero can be anyone yeah it's like anyone's journey that yeah awesome uh, actually hearing you talk about this stuff <clears throat> was bringing back memories for me because uh when i was a kid i used to draw comic book mm-hmm. characters i had my own series of stories i've always been a creative person like yeah, writing. absolutely and i i don't draw anymore but i used to draw quite a bit as a kid and i had all these different characters mm-hmm. with backstories. And I had all these intricate plots that I came up with as a kid. I just didn't have somebody like you who made it into a reality. Right. Right. In, yeah. in, instead, we just had stories. Um, <laughs> so, Led, let me ask you a question. So what inspired, like, of all the things you and your son could create, what inspired the comic book directly? Were you always a big fan of comic books? Was Jake always a fan of comic books growing up? Um, always. I'm from the time I was, you know, like, I think I was what, three and a half, almost four when Star Wars first came out. And then nice. like, nice. then, um, yeah, I'm showing my age, but, um, it, when it like, I guess that was like the start, like my father really introduced me to like comic books and things. And I've been collecting comics for such a long time. Nice. I didn't think that like there's something I always wanted to do as a little as a little kid. Everybody wanted to be like, you know, firemen and doctors Mm -hmm. and and they're all respectable professions. But like I always knew in my in my head, and my heart that I wanted to draw Saturday morning cartoons or like draw comic books. And that was something I always wanted to do ever since I was a little kid. It never really wavered. Of course, life gets in the way and kind of deters you every now and then. Right. But I never stopped like dreaming about what it would be like to like to be like a comic book artist. That's all I ever wanted to do. But it was something that I didn't introduce to my son. It was just something. Basically, I was just embracing a special interest. Mm-hmm. It was about the time when he was about three, or he was in pre-K, and um, all he wanted to do was talk about superheroes. Nice. So everything was, you know, like enchanted hammers and utility belts mm-hmm. and. Um, everything like he he took the time to learn everything that he could about every superhero but the problem was was that he wasn't able to identify like like um his sight words in school Mm. or he was often like if it wasn't about superheroes he really didn't want to like be a part of the conversation right so I, I took his love, like his love for superheroes, which was great because, like, I always drawing superheroes all the time. I, I thought to myself, like, would it be cool if I just like asked the teachers if I could just get some of his work and like try to like interpret it with like you know uh, some of you know like like uh, like some of the characters. And mm-hmm. we'll sit down together, and we just started drawing, and. Um, and I noticed how receptive he was to it, like yeah. how much he started to focus. We would sit and draw together. Yeah. So as I was, I started Googling stuff and I found like art therapy and like reading about it, watching YouTube videos. And then like a light went off on my head. I'm like, hey, wait a minute. I've been drawing since I was like the age of two. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why don't I just like, you know, try making a lesson plan out of this? Right. And what I did was I took like a any comic book and I broke down ended into like 10, 12, yeah, probably maybe 12, 12 different topics. We would sit together and I would teach him how to like uh, understand his emotions by 
you know, like which colors represent certain emotions, which, yeah. um, how would you draw a sad picture, an angry picture? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, drawing yourself as a superhero is meant to highlight his, uh, his traits, you know, his, the good, the good positive things. Right. So I, um, I went with that and, um, over time, over like several weeks, he started to draw himself as a character. And it was like that time he called himself super Jake. And he would dress up as the character and run around the house. And I was like, wow, this is really awesome. Yeah. And I would sit there with the tape recorder, like um, uh, uh, with the, like the voice recorder and record him as he was playing. And then I started interpreting the story mm-hmm. and like drawing the characters. And then I started creating like small, like simple, like beginner's reader books. And I gave them to his teacher just to try out, see if the kids like them, mm-hmm. you know, see if he responds to these. Right. And that's where it pretty much started. That is awesome. That is awesome. Wow. Uh, and he obviously got super into it, and you guys have uh, continued to do it. Uh, now, how old is yeah. Jake now? Uh, he's 13. 13. And he continues awesome. to help me write the stories and creating new characters. Oh, that's and, wonderful. And, um, yeah, so we've been having a field day with it. And just now, like, I would say recently within the last couple of weeks, we had a really cool idea because now that he's learned exactly what went into creating Jay Jet Pulse, mm-hmm. um, we uh, like we're actually starting a series of like YouTube videos like within the next month or so, like within the next like actually within the next like two three weeks of like the same lesson plans that I help teach him how to create like superheroes and create your own superhero story will help other kids unleash their own heroes so they can create their own stories and like introduce them to creative writing and drawing and yeah, different techniques. That is wicked. Awesome, man. Like, and, and you're helping your son. So obviously you're an amazing father for what you've done uh, so far. Thank like, you, sir. Amazing father for that. Uh, that. Not to sound weird about it, but now I feel like I should like step up as a dad and do more. Uh, you know, like, I mean, we all have, we all kind of put in uh, effort where we can, but that's such an amazing, yeah. wonderful story. And it's great that you Thank guys you. are continuing. Oh, that's yes. so cool. Cause now you're actually trying to bring yes. it out to other people so they can also engage with their son or daughter or uh, child exactly. in any way. That's wonderful. Exactly. And that's the beauty of it. Not only are we teaching, you know, like uh, we're teaching just like arts and crafts, but actually like writing, introducing mm. into reading. Um, and hopefully like the this new like the like the, these new series of videos will also, you know, be helpful, like not yeah. only just for like for parents to, to engage with their children, but also like for teachers to help them, you know, come up with like ideas like the um, um, like for children, like like. I'll tell you a little secret. I wanted to be an art teacher. There was one time I just wanted to teach art. <laughs> it's awesome. And, and I thought it would be so cool. Like the like the like because I see how how awesome it is. Like um when when Jake finally learned how to read and was putting sentences together, and it was because he saw himself in the pages. Yeah. And um to be able to, you know, share all of this, like like uh, like as you mentioned earlier, like I don't claim to be a professional mm. of like any field, but as a parent, like my experience is through trial and error. Yeah. So if there's any way of like helping other kids, um, like express themselves, mm-hmm. like through through art, through uh, through writing, you know, this is a way to really get them, you know, to the like the like the like to really push them forward. Yeah, absolutely. And there's so many lessons you can learn from it. Uh, and you said he really started to engage when he saw himself in the pages. It is super important to be able to see a representation of ourselves. It is super important to yeah. be able to engage with that. Um, as being somebody who is autistic, uh, we don't have a lot of representation. We don't see ourselves very often. And very specifically, because Autism is so, and just neurodiverse uh, diversity in general is such a vast, wide amount of people, and so varying. Yes. It's very hard to create a character that can represent that many people. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that. Nobody uh, to to date from all the characters that people have kind of pointed out to me that exist in TV and movies. There's not one single character that kind of represents a large enough amount of us to kind of represent us to the general public. 
Um, right. And I also paid very close attention to that. You're yeah. like, you've made it like that. That's a, that's an amazing point. And by creating this character, I was a little afraid. I was a little mm. afraid that I might misrepresent, you know, like, uh, like, uh, like neurodiversity. And I wanted to pay like, so I paid a lot of attention to myself, <laughs> like, interacting with him, learning his nuances, what he's, you know, like, what he likes, what he doesn't like, watching him, like, when he's with his friends, right. especially, they, you know, their conversations, all of that was, like, like, the the, the world that, that that is Jake Jeff Pulse, like, <laughs> embodies, like, reality, like, his life, like, it's familiar to him, like, uh, so... And that's what I wanted people to see. I yeah. really wanted people to see well, that and the about his headphones, he was like kind of embarrassed about wearing them. Mm-hmm. So I incorporated them into his super suit. Right. So that it actually becomes not and I didn't want to highlight, you know, these, you know, I don't call them deficits, I don't call them weaknesses or right. hindrances. Like, you know, like Superman has kryptonite or yeah. like some superhero has like, but I did not want it to be seen as that. So right. like the headphones basically help him focus his power. Right. You know, and harness, that, that way that ability. Yeah. Right. Like in, in, in the X-Men, like, yeah, like Cyclops has the Ruby Quartz glasses absolutely. and something like that I thought was absolutely amazing. And it's like, you know, where other people see, you know, uh, and I, you know, like I, that's what the one thing I didn't want my son to feel like, you know, like he understands. He's like, he understands. He's like, yeah, you know, like, like you're, so, he's like, I have a thing, mm-hmm. but he doesn't let that, you know, he doesn't let that limit him. So right. when we created that, you know, we wanted to show like how, like he's more powerful than he thinks this thing is just yes. helping him focus it. And it's like for every little thing, like uh, another character in our story, she does not quite make eye contact when she mm-hmm. speaks but you know we wanted to like the i really wanted to embody like his friendships with his friends and mm-hmm. they're all kind of mirrored and like represented in all of these characters nice so nice. yeah i, I, so I really question. wanted to keep it grounded That's sure awesome. so um going on the kind of like uh the from the from the nerd angle here the uh-huh. geek angle here uh <laughs> so what are what yeah. are what are some of the powers and abilities that Jake has? And like, are there any villains and what are the villains like? Okay. Okay, cool. So like uh, the, the, the villains and um, I love the nerd questions. Awesome. Okay. So, <laughs> so, um, so the, the answer, what, what are Jake's powers? Jake, um, Jake has the, you know, of course the ability of flight. He is not quite super strong, but he's also incredibly fast. Okay. Okay. Cool. So it's um, and because of his blinding speed, there are times when he could appear to be like in two places at the same time. But he's really like um, uh, instead of uh, I would say like super strength, like um, it's more like um, like uh, like he uses like the air around him, almost like like a sonic boom type thing, mm-hmm. where like you know like for his punches or like um, flying past the sound barrier um. Yeah. The, the source of his power is pretty much light. So the beams that come out of his eyes are like, you know, like light. And it's like, um, it's, you know, like, it's a great, st- like, it, it's, it's a great character. It's just like, um, and I left it open for Jake to really define who his, um, like, what his powers are. But yeah. we started from there. That's you don't need and, a lot of, um, uh, you don't need a lot of strength if you can create enough inertia. That is a true statement. Yeah. Because actually, while yeah. you described that with his speed, I was thinking of the Flash the entire time. Flash isn't super strong, but can generate enough force by going fast enough where he can hit somebody. Uh, right. Absolutely. That's that's awesome. Right. Not not to bring and up I'm another good. superhero at the same time. We're here talking about Jake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the the villains in the story is very interesting. Because the villains, like um, the the villains are the it's the um, the villains are the the goblin the, the goblin hive, and they're led by the uh, the hive queen, mm-hmm. and um, and uh, the 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 hive queen is basically like uh, she's one of like the like the, the, the she's one of like the five guardians 
like uh, like in the universe from like years, from centuries, from eons ago, and she mm-hmm. fell from grace, and she just wants power for herself. So she seduces this race of like eating you know, all the goblins who are like these like we're at war with the um with the trolls. Mm-hmm. And my son has this thing with like goblins and trolls and things like that. And there was something that he had going on for like for years, and um, so. It's like there's like the the villains are actually like these eight nine foot giants, but oh, wow. the cool part is is how like you know the the goblins are like you know it, it's like the way how like in Star Trek you have your Vulcans and mm-hmm. you have the, uh, the the Romulans where like the Romulans are more warlike the Vulcans are more logical. Right. In this story, the trolls are very peace loving. They're the philosophers, the gardeners. The uh, the scientists, the musicians, and the the goblins are like the warriors, the soldiers. You know, they're they're the ones born and bred to fight. Mm-hmm. So when the goblin queen basically she wants this power for herself, you know, like she pits these two these two races together. Right. So it's it's a pretty crazy it's a pretty crazy story. So um, one of the characters, Mars the <clears throat> Troll, which is one of the team members on Jake's team. Mm-hmm. you know, belongs to, like, this race of peace-loving beings, you know, right. even though, like, he's much larger and, like, he looks, like, really, like, you know, like, Hulk-like, I mean, big, you know, but I wanted to also show kids how, like, you can also be a hero, like, and look different. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Because <laughs> right. absolutely everyone can be. They can be the hero of their own yeah. story. Absolutely. Uh, so I'm I'm going to go, I'm going to, jump off of steve here and i'm gonna ask a nerd question as well growing up who was your favorite superhero oh wow okay my favorite superhero growing up i would say it, it was actually superman superman i mean okay. I, like batman was cool but like you know like you know, like batman was cool but like superman like yeah i grew up on that but then again i grew up on a lot of other things too so mm-hmm. it's um but yeah superman was one of the things that i followed like the most okay so you're a DC guy over Marvel, understood? Yeah, I know we might get a couple of boos from there, but <laughs> that's all right. I'm I'm well, a DC okay guy myself. That. I'm DC myself. <laughs> uh, I've always been a big fan of the Green Lantern uh, because of the emotional spectrum of light, because it's all about yes. internally and that emotional uh, uh, kind of strife that we go through, that emotional struggle. So I always connected with yes. Green Lantern. It's far more psychological based than a lot of other comics. Mm-hmm. Right. Like Batman is straight up for anybody who wanted to be a cop or eventually. Right. Uh, You know what I mean? Like it's detective stuff. It's Mm -hmm. figuring stuff out. And I didn't care to figure anything out. I just wanted to figure out how to get Mm -hmm. along with people. And that's kind of Green Lantern story. Right. Like, yeah, regardless of what iteration of Green Lantern. I mean, uh, I got into comics in. 91 92 relatively speaking so it was towards the end of the hal jordan run when kyle rayner came about who was an illustrator a, com- uh, a comic creator and so i came in where they have a person who is doesn't have a background in being a hero you know hal jordan yeah, was in the-, the air force john stewart was a marine uh guy gardner was a cop uh, like they all had these kind of I'm going to do the job correctly. Kind of, I'm going to save people backgrounds and Kyle Rayner didn't. Mm -hmm. He was just a random guy who happened to be chosen because he was willing to face his fears and move forward. So obviously being a young kid, especially one who was very fearful of a lot of things, I could identify with somebody like that more. I could look up to somebody like that. So that was, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And to tell you the truth, like the mid 80s and the 90s around that time was a great time for comic books. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Amazing stories came from the, uh, like came from that no, like came from that time. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. Steve, how about you? What was your favorite comic book character? <clears throat> Mine's boring. I used to read Spider-Man. What how is that boring? Spider-Man and I like the Venom comics and I okay. used to read um I like the whole Spider-Man Venom Carnage stuff. Okay. And all the symbiotes. Yeah. And um, I also used to read, this is the Archie uh, Sonic comics because I was a huge fan of Sonic the Hedgehog when wow. I was growing up. Well, I'm uh, younger than you. So cool. Yeah, you are. I'm younger yeah, than yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. And actually, the Archie, the Archie comic Sonic could kick pretty much mm-hmm. anyone's ass. Yeah, with the uh the chaos <laughs> with the chaos emeralds when yeah. he turns yellow and goes like Super Saiyan. Uh huh. So what they made him like 
You're mixing genres here. I know, sir. but he goes like he turns yellow and he starts glowing. <laughs> no, yeah, that it's version of Sonic, that version of Sonic, yeah, Supersonic can kick like anyone's butt. Yes. They made him like insanely powerful right. in the comic books. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I used to read the 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 Sonic and Knuckles comic books and stuff. All right. I it's mean, kinda, now that you bring that up, though, I would really so like good. to watch Goku and Sonic go at it. I'm saying that's the next movie right there. <laughs> Watching Goku stand there and just be like Sonic. How are you doing this? And Sonic goes, poof, I'm gold. Uh, and then and then Goku's like, uh, all right, let me go Super Saiyan. 118. Uh, just saying. <laughs> I think he's up to level 37 now. I, I Super Saiyan level. I liked Spider-Man because um, he was kind of a smart ass. Yes. And I'm I'm a smart ass. Yes, you are. So I like and the fact that he was <laughs> he was into science and he was nerdy, and uh-huh. I was into science and nerdy. So that's kind of why I liked him. You know what? Me and Led over here, we're going to keep being the jocks that we are, and we're not going to talk to you nerd people anymore. Uh, <laughs> no truth in what I just said. Actually, I, I, maybe you were. I don't know. I was never very athletic. I didn't become <laughs> athletic until I hit my uh, until I hit 40. So and I turned 43 next month. So, <laughs> you know, when I when I was a kid, I was never into team sports and crap, mostly because I couldn't fit into a team. We've got to work together. Yeah. Why? Why do we have to work together? <laughs> uh, I know that feeling too. I, I couldn't be like the teams really when I was, yeah. you know, when, when I was in school. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like all the time Large people would try to get me into video games and be like, hey, come over to my house. Let's play Nintendo or Genesis together. And I'm like, why? I can just sit at home and play. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know why I would travel to your house. You want me to walk two blocks? No, thanks. I'm going to sit at home and play Mortal Kombat. Mm. <laughs> Not realizing how important it was to socialize. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hear, hearing a level one autist talking about how important it is to socialize. Um, so anyway. Anyway. Oh, so uh, I like we should it. probably get I, on I, track. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. I never uh, told anyone that I used to read the Sonic comic books. You've never told anybody? No, I feel like it's embarrassing. So but. wait, you decided the Don't moment to come out as reading Archie Sonic comics, the time to come out was when we're yeah. talking about somebody else's comic? And specifically, I really like, liked... To the world? My favorite character was Knuckles. I thought Knuckles no. was cool. How? Okay, you're... Gra- <clears throat> Led, bear with me just a moment. You gravitated no, towards okay. bad guys? No, Knuckles was not a bad guy. He was no, no, he was pseudo. He was pseudo a bad guy. <clears throat> he was tricked by uh, Eggman. Yeah. Into uh, you doing Dr. Bad. Robotnik. He was tricked into doing bad things That's for him. So cool. Uh, but you also liked Venom and Carnage. Yeah. Like you like gravitated the, towards the pseudo bad guys or yeah, the anti hero. Like Venom, Venom ended up being like hired the by the hero. Yeah. 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 Um, Did you also watch Die Hard and think I could also jump off of a building? No. no oh, okay. No, Just no. checking. Oh, no, but Venom was eventually hired by the government in the comic books. Yeah, they, they had him work as an agent, but he was like, you know, he would kill people and stuff. And right. like, hey, you shouldn't do that. But we're going to have you do go on missions for us anyway. They had him basically like a secret ag- as a secret agent. Right. And he would go and bust up bad guys. But he was more violent than Spider-Man, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, y'all ever notice that in Marvel comics, like if they don't really know what to do with a character, they make him a secret agent for some government agency like. That's true. Right. Like every (laughs) chance possible, they make him a secret agent for somebody and they show up in some random moment and they're like, ha ha, I work for this agency. Like DC at least created their own. Hey, you know what? It's fine. (laughs) Why don't we we get back to Jake Jet Pulse? Oh, let's get back to Jake because that's why we're here. Yes. But (laughs) but I also, well, I do want to ask a couple questions because we're both parents uh, uh, of children on the spectrum and I want to ask some stuff about that. Mm-hmm. For you, uh, as a parent, yeah. uh, what what have you found to be the the greatest thing about being a parent of a child uh, who has autism, as well as what have you found to be uh, the most frustrating, if you will, or um, difficult, I, or I, struggle? I, mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to word that. I mean, to tell you the truth, the struggle, I, I don't really have any struggles okay. with that. I think, like, everything is pretty much, like, um, like the, in the beginning, I would say, there were, like, the, I would call them, like, 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 like hurdles, mm-hmm. you know, not, not as much as obstacles, but hurdles where it's, um, I had to rethink the way how 
I imagine parenting to be like looking at like, you know, I, I learned not to look at my other friends and how their kids development and try to judge Jake, yes. you know, yeah. with, you know, like with their development and like, you're like, why is he doing this? And they're all doing mm. that. I mean, it's like, there's like, like, I remember there were times too, like where, like, I remember he had um, uh, a speech delay and um, he would often get frustrated when he couldn't really actively express himself. Yeah. So in the beginning, it would be a little embarrassing to like to be in public when that happens because mm. you know you get the 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 stare of like you know discontent, like oh what a horrible parent, you know. Mm-hmm. Or like that feeling like you're being judged, but it's something that I learned to get over. And I'm like, yeah. people do judge. Yes, who he is. I'm not they apologizing. Do. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm right. not apologizing for it. People judge and, because, um, and they have no idea what's going on. Right. And exactly. Let, let you said the perfect thing right there. I'm not apologizing, and I don't think any parent of an autist should apologize for their uh, child's behavior in public like that never, because never it, should it's be. not their kid's fault. It's not bad parenting that caused it. It's just their kid's way of expressing how they feel. And nobody should have right. to apologize for somebody's expression of how they feel. That, right. Sorry. That and, was my you know, soapbox I just moment. To, yeah. <laughs> I, I just learned to like, it, it really like to, um, like once, once I was able to connect with him, yeah. with, like by speaking a special interest and, talking about superheroes and relating everything to superheroes mm-hmm. i was able to have a whole different dimension conversations yeah. and it's like there's you know and then it, it hit me there for a minute that it's like i already knew jake was smart but yeah. he is a lot smarter than i thought he was right you know? and it's just like it's just so cool because we're able to sit together we're able to like to, to create characters and write stories mm-hmm. and do all these things together and we've had like the like really great you know like really great um just really like our hangouts like like yeah. it's like he's like he's really become like the guy i go to when i have an idea and i'm like hey jake what do you think about this character and he'll tell me he'll be honest with me he'll be flat out honest be like, yeah well but um, I think like the 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 tough parts were were just like as a single parent, mm. you know, you're you, you don't have like, you know, thankfully, I, I like I had my parents help, you know, but like uh, there are times when you have nobody else to rely on but yourself. Right. And when it comes to like, you know, like raising, you know, like like raising a child on your own, that's a challenge within itself. And then yeah. raising a child, you know, on the spectrum that was like some day there some days where like. I just look forward to just laying down. I look forward yeah. to like going to sleep. Absolutely. But it was all worth it. It was all it, like, it's, it was all worth it. Mm-hmm. Like everything that's like the last looking back at the last 13 years. I mean, I wouldn't change a thing. Oh, absolutely. I not for wouldn't. myself either. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah. Uh, and and, and um, you touched on yeah. that honesty piece. And I really like, mm-hmm. we, we said it before and I don't remember if we were recording yet or not. But that honesty thing is probably one of the greatest gifts about having a child on the spectrum because you never have to wonder how they're really feeling. They're going to tell you. And it's so dead honest. Yeah. If they like a food, they're going to let you know they like it, but they're also going to let you know when they don't. Oh, exactly. You know, and it's not you that code com- anything. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and, and but it's great as uh, um one of the things that, that was so amazing to me about that is it forces me to then double check with myself of how I'm reacting to it. Am I reacting because my yes. child actually said something inappropriate or am I reacting because, oh, yeah, they were honest and now I just got to check in with my own feelings on it, right? Because uh, yeah. sometimes it's just pride that crops up. And I and I will say just to touch back on when somebody, when uh, uh, a child with autism is at having a moment in public, that's another time to kind of check our pride. You know what I mean? Cause yeah, that, that the stares and looks people give, we full well know what they're thinking. I mean, it's pretty, it's written pretty well on them. Uh, and, oh, definitely. And we got to focus on our kid. So that honesty piece, I love. Absolutely. Uh, I feel the same way with both my children. Uh, and I, like I told you before, and I don't 
remember if I, we were recording or not. Um, I'm also a parent. Mm-hmm. I have a older son who's 17, who's a level one and a daughter who's 14. That's a level two. And with her, just about every time we go out in public, I mean, it's, but she's just doing her thing. Right. And that was something right. that because I'm a stepdad, I came into it after she was already diagnosed and kind of first mm-hmm. couple of times being in public with her. I didn't know how she was going to behave. I didn't know how she was going to react. And it was one of the first times right. I saw the way other people react and that immediate judgment of control your child. No, thanks. Yeah. She's doing her thing. Mm-hmm. Like she's not hurting right. anybody. She's just getting loud. Well, guess what, everybody? You're in public. Not all of us behave the way you think we should. Right, exactly. You know, I agree with you. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's actually allowed me to understand and have more, not empathy per se, but more understanding of the way other people are going to behave in public. Because not everybody's going right. to behave the same way we all do. That social expectation yes. isn't necessarily there for everybody. Maybe they were raised in a different culture. They're going to act a different way. Maybe they were raised in just a completely different household. Yeah, but a lot of those same people who are judgy yeah. also will um, do things that impact other people around them. Oh, they, yeah. Like, for instance, oh, yeah. as a stupid example, Please. but you have people like that who will judge mm-hmm. the way your child's acting, yeah. but then – They'll be in the parking lot at a grocery store and just leave their cart in the middle of the parking oh, yeah. lot or oh, yeah. stuff like that. It's like, well, you don't right. care about taking care of other people around you or right. putting back the cart or like during COVID. I remember people just doing whatever the hell they wanted oh, at, yeah. at the grocery store, too, instead of like I tried to follow mm-hmm. the rules the store wanted me to do. Mm-hmm. And then you have some Karen walking down the aisle, whatever direction she wants, not wearing <laughs> a mask. And yeah. I'm like, what the oh, hell? Yeah. Like, I'm trying to do what it, what they want us to do to try to, you know. Right. Or or even with the, the carts, I put the cart back in because I don't mm-hmm. want to make it harder for the guy who has to put the carts away. I don't want right. to hit somebody's right. car. Get it. But yep. I actually think about and I care about other people's you know what's going mm-hmm. on. But those people will sit there and judge you because your kid's being right. loud because it's impacting them. But it, they don't give a shit about anybody else around. Them. Right. And I, I'm just obviously I'm making right. a, a broad generalization. No, but, but you're absolutely right, because they do judge it as bad behavior. They don't judge it as a different exactly. behavior. And and. Like mm-hmm. uh, we had a moment at one point, me and my partner had a moment where uh, my daughter just doing her thing. Yes, she's being a little loud, but she was singing Little Mermaid. Like, how is that hurting anybody to sit at an IHOP and sing a Little Mermaid song? Like, that's not hurting nobody. Like, it's not ruining your right. day. But this woman, older woman, and I think maybe her name was actually Karen, probably. I don't know. But she turned around and said, excuse me, I'm trying to enjoy a meal with my husband. And I said, lady, it's 1030 in the morning. You're in public at a restaurant on a Sunday morning, you know, when families come out and sure, she's singing a song, but it's not like she's singing, you know, horrible words right now. She's singing being part of your world. Like, what's the problem right. here, lady? And she goes, well, I don't want to hear right. it. And I said, cool. Then ask to have your table switched. Or better yet, just leave. Just leave now. In right. fact, I'll pay for your food if you want to just leave now. And because right. I was still, that was a bunch of years ago when I was still like, oh, I'm going to defend my daughter kind of moment, opposed to just focusing on her. And, you know, that that woman did complain to the manager. And the manager stepped over to us and said, could you? And I went, no, no, I won't ask her to be quiet. No, I won't ask her to calm down because quite honestly, man, right. if if that woman wasn't here, we wouldn't be talking because none of your staff mm-hmm. had a problem with it. Nobody else in the room had a problem with it. This lady got a problem with it because she thinks people should behave a certain way. No, thanks. There's eight billion of us on the planet. Sorry, I agree. I started to get I, all I agree with you there. Yeah, I started to jump on a little rant there. I apologize. I get I get very passionate about oh. my uh, about my kids and and just in general, I get very passionate about like nobody has the right to tell any of us how to behave if we're not hurting each other. Like, right, exactly. Yeah, for none of us. Um, it, it looks like you've turned into a an avatar. Yeah, I'm wondering what happened. It looks like I have Jake. no idea. But it's so funny because it's like it's like I can yeah. still hear you. I know that we're still connected. I think uh, but you, however I think you might have just turned your camera off. Accidentally? Yeah. More than likely. But that's okay. Maybe it's like I'm trying to get back to the screen though, but however, it's just not there. 
Oh. And I'm pressing the power button, and nothing seems to be happening. Uh oh. Huh. Well, that's, that's so okay. odd, but you're still connected. Yes. Yeah. We're still here. So obviously the app that you're on is still doing its thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it, it is. Okay. So we're still doing it. Yeah. We're, let's, we're good. Let's keep going. Yeah. 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 Uh, me, me and Steve will just in post, we'll add in some graphics of something. Actually, I, I was thinking of just putting a Jake Jet Pulse thing behind the whole episode. Oh, that's a great idea. That's if I could find a piece idea. of art awesome. on your website. Yeah. Well, I, I, can, I guarantee nice. you know, I can the copy. guy who creates it could give us something for art that we can put up behind it. I don't think you have to go online to search for it. Yeah, or you give me a piece uh, of art to, put, to yeah. put behind the... Yeah. Because um, I'm going to crop yeah, out... I'll make you guys uh, a poster you could put up there. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Perfect. Because I usually crop perfect. out around the, the video of us talking and I put something behind it. Yeah. Yeah. That's absolutely oh, cool. awesome. Yeah. So... uh we 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 learned a little bit about the history of Jake, uh, uh, not just the human being, but also the character and the comic book. What's the future hold for Jake and what kind of directions? Because you talked about doing the YouTube thing, but what other kind of directions are you doing uh, with that? Well, we're going to continue the series. Uh, we're going to continue the the, the 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 comic book series. Mm -hmm. And what uh, what we'd like to do is really focus on like uh, Jake really wants to focus on the well-being of other kids. Awesome. So we want to like create our books and each issue will be themed to like a certain, uh, you know, towards like, uh, like friendship or like acceptance or like um, we, we wanted to like create something where each book has a specific lesson to teach. Right. Um, kind of like the old school, like PSAs at the end of like the cartoons at the end of GI Joe. Right, and learning is half the battle. Yeah, yeah, and it's like we really want to like like um Jake is really um a, the he's, he has an affection for the um for like the like old school cartoons that I used to watch. Right, yeah. so nice. I used to watch Captain really Planet. To, of course, you watched Captain oh, Planet. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> Mullet Man saving so the we're world. We're gonna do that. Mullet Man, really? Yeah. He had a mullet. mullet. I know he had a mullet, but you're going to call him Mullet Man? <laughs> Captain Mullet. Jesus, Captain Mullet. Captain, Captain Mullet. mullet. Uh, was he the one who had fire? No, no. Mullet. Uh, the Captain Planet was the, the kids with the rings. No, 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 I know. But each ring gave him a specific power. Like the Russian girl uh, did wind. No, she didn't do wind. Yeah, she did wind. Yeah, she did wind. Uh, the the, uh, the, the other guy had earth. And South American could, boy had uh, heart. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He had heart. The boy from but, Africa right. had earth. Yeah. Uh, so so the redhead dude, he must have been fire then. Uh, yeah, yeah. He was from yeah. uh, Chicago, I think. Right. Or something. I right. Know. Oh, I don't that, remember where they were all from. I just realized he's from Chicago and he had fire. So like the Chicago fires that like yeah. destroyed most of the city. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Sorry, we we tangent. It's kind of our superpower is we can jump around topics like nobody's business. Um, that's yeah. what you get so, for coming on a show with us. Yeah, that's the best conversations, though. I gotta, I gotta admit, this is one of the like the this is one of my like my favorite conversations. I'm loving this. Nice, nice. Well, we do aim to please, if you will. Um, so <laughs> moving forward. Oh, here's a question for you. Um, are are you sure. and Jake going to bring Jet, Jake Jetpack to any of the Jet Comic Cons? Pulse. Jet Pulse. What did I say? You said Jetpack. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, okay. It's his twin brother Jetpack. All right, Jesus. There you go. New character uh, idea. Yeah, new character. Huh? huh? <laughs> he doesn't have any yeah. powers. He just uses a jetpack. That's right. He doesn't have any powers. He just <laughs> hangs out. <laughs> um, he's, a, he's the cheerleader of uh, Jet. Jet. What? He's got one of those like water jetpacks. Yeah, there. exactly. Exactly. He's just the cheerleader. Go, Jake. Go. <laughs> you know, like that's his that superpower cool. support. It's like his Deadpool. Yeah. Ex. Jake yeah, is yeah. Spider-Man and then yeah, Jet, yeah. Jake Jetpack is 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 uh Deadpool and he's just he doesn't he can't fly so oh, he uses the jetpack. So good. I love it. He's like, I'm just okay. like you. <laughs> You're nothing like me. Look, I can fly. Look, right. he chases after Jake and just loses gas like halfway through, so he never makes it to the adventure. Yeah, exactly. Like he just kind of tries yeah. to tag along. Yeah. Oh, and then he shows up in an Uber at the end. Sorry, guys, I ran out of gas again. What happened? 
Uh, that's all. Awesome. <laughs> he shows so, up when all the action is over. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> did he just I, pulls a break. Did I miss anything? <laughs> yeah. He yeah. should throw <laughs> poppers at people, like the little, the little firework crack. Oh, like the, the little popper. snaps. Yeah, the snaps. Yeah. He should throw snappers. <laughs> yeah, he's just throwing snaps at people. <laughs> Oh man, this is so good. Hey, goblin! <laughs> snap, snap! Oh, that didn't affect you. I'm gonna run away now. Um, oh, so anyway, Led uh, Comic Cons. Ha- have you thought about going to any? Have you gone to any and brought your character along with you? We have. Well, we actually did. Um, and because um, like uh, Jake Jekyll started getting its popularity really like uh, like during like COVID. Nice. It was like it kind of restricted us from like from traveling. So. We were fortunate enough to do a really cool uh, panel at um, San Diego Comic-Con. It was a virtual panel, which what? we thought was absolutely amazing. Yeah, That's awesome. Uh, which is really great. You got to go um, to San Diego Comic-Con? Yeah. Okay, so more it was importantly, really cool to you got to panel. talk while you were there. That's awesome. Yeah, well, we weren't there. We did it virtually. Uh, because well, we got to, good they, enough. They, well, it's still like being there, and yeah. it's awesome. That's and still that awesome. was such an amazing thing. So nice. we were able to, like, you know, at least spread our word and, like, Good Morning America, the Today Show. Um, oh, wow. Uh, it, was, it was really great. So it's like this, like, so now we're, like, shifting gears and we're just going to bombard social media now. <laughs> so As you we're, should. Like, really going to, yeah, so we're really going to really get into it. And because um, Jake loves the camera. I, however, you know, I'm, you know, it, it is what it is. But Jake yeah. loves Jake loves being in front of a camera, and he's a great spokesperson. I wish awesome. he was here, but you know he's off at a birthday party right now. I but, a young um, star on your hands there. Yeah, young star. Yeah, yeah, and he's in. He's uh, so like he's all for it. Like we wanted to do a whole series of like really like teaching kids how to build. Like that that was the thing. Each episode is basically engineered to teach a kid. Uh, or adults, anyone of any age, really, how to create their own, you know, like, it doesn't have to be a superhero story, but a story of their own. Right. Because we, like, we wanted to to really embrace, like, the um, the idea of people unleashing their inner hero and creating, you know, the characters, the stories that are inside them. They might be, like, they're if- not sure how to tell it. Uh huh. What was your question? I'm sorry. Uh, I was gonna make a joke. I was gonna say, "What if they're Greek? Mm-hmm. Can they unleash their inner Euro?" Oh, that's. It was a joke. It was bad. Really? But still, that's... even if they did, that would be awesome. I would. I would. Their, you know, their inner I sandwich. Would love to see it. <laughs> that, no, yeah, that would. That would. Not? You know what? It was a joke, but quite honestly, my there's probably sandwich. some Greek kid going, "Hey, how come I don't see Greek characters other than like some stereotypical Greek god picture?" Uh, yeah, I mean, come on. Um, Sorry, I make right. bad jokes. It's where we wanted to create a really diverse yeah. team of characters in our stories. That's wonderful. So that, so that there's a, there's um, a character to identify with, like with everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, and we're really able, like, to like moving forward, we're going to tell more stories about. Because now that Jake's a little older and he's asking more questions about the world. Yeah. This is still a great way to teach him and and the way how to like to teach others by introducing it to them. Yeah. Uh uh so it's you know I thought like what what, what better way than to like to do it like through like the comic books. There were so mm-hmm. many things I learned from from comics and it's um and th- that's like the beauty of storytelling. If like if I can so. like help someone else help create their story like through like revisiting their own experiences whether good or bad you yeah. know these are methods that they can use to put their stories together so Absolutely. this is like we're looking forward to putting this whole new series together and we hope that you know that people watch or like you know at least come to our website and subscribe like in their newsletters to let to let everybody know like when our first video is going to be released and uh you know so it'll be really cool to see yeah. everyone like you know really getting involved and engaging with each other and like you know and this is what this, this is what the whole superhero story is supposed to be about I, that's what, how i've always felt yeah that's awesome because i didn't have any characters that really identify with me like mm-hmm. you know like it, like you know it's a, a skinny like you know skateboard kid from brooklyn you know <laughs> when i was a kid you know and it was like all well, my friends and like yeah, they were the jocks you know right. i was you know 
I was like, I was off doing my own thing, you know? Yeah. So absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and when you uh, uh, start putting out the episodes for uh, YouTube and whatnot, and also on your website, please let us know so we can help advertise a bit so we can kind of promote it out on our pages and stuff too. Uh, Cause everybody oh, should oh, understand who Jake is. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this was all like, and what I love though, is that these are all like m- majority of all of this is, I, I have a small influence in this, maybe 25%. But I will tell you that a lot of the stuff, these are like Jake's ideas. Yeah. And it's like, I happily endorsed them. So like, in, he really wants to embody being a real life superhero. Absolutely. Like he wants to, that's what he wants to be. And I, as a dad, I feel like it's my mission in life to help him at least get close to that. Right. You know, he might Absolutely. not be able to fly, but to inspire someone that's, Hey, you know, you might be just, able to get a jetpack. Yep, might be able. Oh no, we lost Led. Oh, oh no, I hope Led calls back any minute now. Led, we lost you. Um, I, I was, I was, I was gonna say, um, maybe I should wait a second to see if he comes back. He doesn't like us. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, he was like, you know what, y'all, I'm done on that sentence. Click. Uh, no, but for everyone, we did lose lead. Unfortunately, um, uh, you did see that he was on his cell phone and, uh, so maybe service got a little spotty or whatnot, or maybe his app decided to finally cut out on him. We don't know. Uh, but please look up, uh, Jake J- jet pulse. Really? You know what? I said jetpack the last time. I don't want to screw it up again. All right. J- jet jetpacky. <laughs> anyway, look up lead, look up Jake. Uh, uh, definitely support uh, Jake as a human being, uh, uh, as well as we got to give a lot of love. We got to give a lot of props to Led. Uh, Led is an amazing father. He's obviously completely dedicated to his son. And and it's so amazing. Like he said, he doesn't like the spotlight. He doesn't like being on TV or whatnot, but he deserves a lot of praise as well because he's helping his son bring his son's dream (laughs) to life. He's helping his son along the way, and he's doing it with humility. He's doing it with compassion and understanding for his son and trying to help others in the process as well. So Led himself right. is a great, amazing person. We're giving him the On the Spectrum Father of the Year Award. We are, even it, though I'm it doesn't a, exist. I just I'm a father it now. You know, of yeah, sorry, he's kids. a better dad than you. I'm he actually, I would actually agree. <laughs> he's a much better dad than I am. I'm sorry, um, Led beats you. He does. Okay. He does. Like you know, two or when three are you years making, from now, I might be able to be in the running. But when are you making yet. a comic for your kids? The second one of them shows any interest whatsoever. Well, in you can make a cowgirl comic. Oh my god, I could. I could for her. Oh, yeah. for my daughter, I could. Uh, she currently is obsessed with wearing a cowgirl outfit and a cow girl right. hat she i'm gonna get her some temple grandin shirts yeah although 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 well, she likes um, to dress this you know she does shirts. she likes to dress that way yeah um and if you didn't see our episode and you want to know what the hell we're talking about as far as like dressing like temple, temple, temple grandin, likes to wear watch cow, our cow episode shirt. about what do they her. call them cattle shirts whatever yeah i think yeah, cattle shirts yeah um i wasn't joking i was being serious yeah no i know and she always does she wears that kind of stuff although she does not like calling them cowgirl anything she actually calls all of it cowboy oh well yeah. whatever teach her own cowboy um, becky yeah uh and i did check with her to see if uh you know how she identifies gender wise and she still calls herself a girl but she's like no i'm wearing a cowboy hat i'm like all it's right because what she calls it so yeah that's what she calls it cares right uh no it doesn't matter either way i just checked anyway uh, all right well curious. um uh okay so i don't know if let's come no, no, back it's it's fine it's fine we, we're at that time anyway we are we are if we we'll if we talk to lead we'll let you know how it went yes and we will make sure that we put up the website how you can order jake's comic book how you can get involved with lead and what nothing oh your hand moved so i thought you were like dude what are you doing uh we're gonna put all the links up in every okay every chat possible we're gonna promote him as much as possible because they both definitely deserve to to have as much attention as they can you know you don't have to respond to anything i do like but if I, I move know, my but I hand, can't, they're I can't. like, what are you doing? Squirrel. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. Okay? You're in the middle of speaking, and then you're just like, what are you doing? All right. So, like, <laughs> I'm watching your body language, and, and it obviously I'm, it doesn't mean what I think it means. Like, nor, I'm getting MT. ready to 
end the episode. Okay, here. let's end the episode. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. We will have another episode on next week. Please check out all of our social media stuff, TikTok, Facebook. If you have any comments about this episode, if you like or dislike whatever is going on in it, please go to any one of those things comment interact with us we are the two human beings who do uh uh read and comment on all messages all right thank you very much thank you bye